Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to take a close look at the PXN, the V99 force feedback wheel. <laughs> so I've been reviewing quite a lot of different racing wheels, but PXN was one of those brands that was on my wishlist for quite a long time now. With a simple reason, because PXN did make a lot of different but interesting products, as some of them have a very nice price point. Compatible with a lot of platforms like PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and Series. So far I understand, not a PlayStation 5. The racing wheel looks kind of fancy, I'm getting some professional vibes over here. It comes with a steering wheel plus base, hull magnetic in induction racing pedals and even the gaming 6 plus 1 shifter. The gear drive has a maximum torque of 3.2 nanometers, so I'm very curious how that's going to be feeling. Drivers for feedback technology, plug and play, and a large 30 cm diameter wheel. However, there's a lot of fancy stuff they're explaining here, but let's do a quick unboxing and let's see for ourselves how good quality it is, because the box itself is quite heavy. So, the box is heavy, that's most of the time. And Interesting but also a positive thing, yeah, because we have reviewed a lot of cheap devices here and this is not going to be one of those plastic fantastic racing wheels. So one of the very cool features that we do have a racing wheel that we can just need to assemble that we have seen before. And the wheel itself looks kind of great, however, this is similar to Thrustmaster and I mean particularly when you're looking at the design, but also when it comes to the form factor and the materials they are using. So let's see what's underneath. There's nothing so far in this part of the box. In here we're finding the base itself that we're going to be needing for the wheel. And oh, this thing is fully made out of metal. In here we're finding the shifter. And also this feels absolutely premium. And let's see what we do have over here. Ah, this is the clamps for putting it on the desk. I was already curious if there was going to be in the box. Next up over here we're having all of the cables. And the power supply. And last but not least, I love the construction of the box. You know, <laughs> pulling it out in this video is not going to be the biggest issue. It's going to be how you're going to be putting it back in the box. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Okay, so let's see. And here we're having the pedals. And man, they are massive. Okay, so this is what we're getting inside the package itself. But let's do a quick overview, also in depth about the product, because there are a lot of things you need to know. So first of all over here we're having the clamps and the way how they made this is quite genius. So they are especially having the clamps for people like me who just want to put this on my desk and don't have a driving simulation yet. So in here we're having the shifter, if you're going to be using this, have a very nice one, let's do a quick overview later on. And then we're having the pedals, all the needed cables. And in here we're having the manual and the 24 volt power supply, I can show you this over here. 24 volts, 2 amps over there. So it's not like a very fancy special one. Over here we're having the wheel itself. I do wonder if you're going to be giving us options for different wheels. And then the base itself with the power cable and the USB plug over there. But let's do a quick overview of each of these products because there are a lot of things you need to know. So let's start off with the pedals. And putting the pedal to the metal is not going to be something we're going to be doing. For the simple reason, they have made the decision to put plastic pedals on there. And there's a little bit of a, let's say, downside, where I find like, the metal pedals kind of cool and gives like, like an extra deluxe feeling. However, when you're looking at, let's say, the controls and everything else, I must say that I am very pleased of the acceleration, the clutch and everything else. The resistance is absolutely amazing. However, if you're going to be already seeing it, and yeah, there's a little bit of instability when you're looking at the pedals. You can see that it's quite easy to move around. And in that case, hmm, at the front we're finding this a very nice grip. And I think it's a very comfortable, let's say, pedal to play with. However, when you're looking at the overall quality, the Logitech ones, the G21s and other ones I've been reusing for many years, I personally prefer those more. Oh yeah, I love the blue color. But okay, here having the racing pedals. So they're using 5 volts, 85 milliamp, of course. There is no extra additional, let's say, power needed. But you're just going to be using the connections over here. Having an, and that is one of the weirdest things. That we do have a tiny bus switch over here. We're having an input for an USB-C and the cable for connecting with the racing wheel itself. But we're also having mounting, let's say, holes over here, so we can use this in a racing simulator if I had one. 
But how about the base itself? You can see the logging mechanism for the wheel itself and it's something similar to like with Thrustmaster. However, when you're looking at the design, you can basically assemble this fairly easy on, let's say, a desk or an, let's say, in play seat or whatsoever, thanks to the way how they actually made this piece of metal. So it feels a little bit more professional when it comes to that. Well, we can just use the bracket slide I'm going to be doing today and assemble this to my desk. How about the connections? The connections is kind of similar with the cheaper models. So over here we're finding the controller and this is more like the spoof system they're using. You need to assemble PlayStation or Xbox controller depending on what kind of system you want to play. Also having a switch over here for 270 and 900 degrees. Having the input for the shifter, the pedals and the input for the power supply. The wheel itself is quite nice quality, similar to Thrustmaster that we have seen before. However, when you're going to be looking at the middle part, this is made out of metal and gives it like a very nice sturdy feel. At the back we're finding even very interesting configuration, that's something I personally, this is the first time I'm actually going to be seeing it, having very nice, not the metal part, because this is something we've seen before, but having a dual flipper configuration on each side, where the right one has a click and the left one doesn't. Connection wise will be put over here throughout the eight pins or the pins that will connect to the base itself. But let's assemble it. The shifter, hmm, it seems like a little bit of a weird feeling about this. So where it's partially made out of plastic, this thing does have like a very nice feel to it. Let me explain and show you what I mean. The chip feel is more of the case and particularly the buttons at the front, nothing very fancy. However, shifting feels quite nice. And that is more like a combination where we're having the base is basic, but the shifting has a very nice feel to it. And that is something I do like. Something you've seen with the Trustmaster 2, having the metal guidance. And this is very nice. I can really appreciate it. The assembly of the base is quite easy. We're going to be using the plastic clamshells. However, the weird thing is that it's very difficult to actually tighten it up. You can just see that it still wiggles. And the construction itself, not the best one out there. However, if you're not going to be touching it, bumping it, whatever, we can tie it up a little bit left or right. So, but that's my personal experience. You can see that I tied it up all the way. Maybe it has to do my desk is very thin, but the wheelbase itself is just great. So when it comes to that, where the clamshells are okay, it does its job. But how about the wheel? It's going to be very easy to actually like put this on here. There's only actually one way you can do this. So we're going to be placing it in the right position. It doesn't click or whatsoever. The only thing I'm going to be doing is turning the nut over here. It will pull the wheel in, make connection. And when it's done, tighten it up and you're ready to go. So everything has been assembled and connected. So what we're going to be doing is connecting the PlayStation controller through the connection over there. And that's actually how it communicates. It's more like a system they're using a lot, but let's plug in the controller and everything. And, oh man, I didn't shut out the console right the last time. But let's see how everything works and how was the overall experience. The spoofing system I love to call it is all fun and game. However, if you just want to play a game like Wipeout, the controls don't work with mine. However, this is a concerning situation, so let's move on to some Gran Turismo. Okay, so let's start off with some Gran Turismo then. So, the force feedback, oh man, it's quite aggressive. Okay, I have been, have been putting the steering wheel to 900 degrees, so just want to have the full overall experience. I did notice that the racing wheel it's quite comfortable to play. The panels are moving around under my desk. Oop. So we changed out from the 9 on the 270. And whoa, this thing is so much more direct now. So it's kind of cool. If you want to play it like that, that's another way to go to. And personally, I do sometimes just love to play the game on 270 degrees, where it's maybe less simulation. It's just a lot of fun. The first feedback feels still the same. We can switch fairly easy. Let's see what happens. There we go.
So that part works quite good. Absolutely. Regarding moving around with the base, the base is absolutely feels sturdy. So if you want to put some force on it, you can actually do that. And take note, I'm basically putting the clamp design on my desk. If you're going to be putting this on the play seat, it's going to be even more of a very cool experience. So where we have this spoof system with the controller, I found it quite interesting to just grab the controller and let's quickly go into the race again. I just want to check out how the gear shifter and everything works. So when it comes to, let's say, using the controls on the wheel, it's not as convenient because we don't have a D-pad and we just have four separate buttons for the D-pad. And it's kind of an, something you really need to get used to. Let's go to the manual gear and let's go. So let's get into some project cars, a different game. Okay, so we have been putting the shifter in action. We don't need the clutch, we can just use the shifter. And of course we're having all kinds of shenanigans on screen. Ooh. Okay, so let's move on. So now I can actually enjoy myself, some clutching and racing. Still, I'm not the biggest fan of gearboxes at this point. In my real car, yes, but not with simulation. So another thing, let's put in the neutral and let's use the shifters. I also implemented the 900 degrees steering configuration. And with project cars, we're having such a different experience. But I can tell you it's more fun than Gran Turismo, but that is of course personal. The force feedback is also quite aggressive, but not in a bad way. I just love the force feedback on this wheel. It makes it really responsive and whoa! <laughs> Ooh, man oh man how about shifting so we need to put the pedal in or the clutch pedal so one two three four five and six and reverse is pushing it in so that's actually working fine so let's put it in one i did notice with gran turismo i'm always like fighting with this i don't know why this clutch panel is so annoying very gently like releasing it but somehow there we go we need to use the clutch otherwise it will not shift see that's what i mean so the way how this actually works when it comes to shifting and using the clutch i don't like it at all it's me being a noob it's maybe one of the reasons but however we can also use the shifter i personally prefer that more it is absolutely so much more fun, actually. Okay, there we go. But the overall experience, besides the pedals moving around like crazy, it's really annoying. I must say the wheel does have like a very nice feedback. And when it comes to using the shifter, I'm just gonna be honest, I'm not going to be using that thing. Also switching between two, uh, 70 and 900 degrees will give you a completely different experience. But what is the overall experience? So first of all, I do get myself a premium view when it comes to the racing wheel itself. And throughout the gameplay, I did notice it's quite annoying to navigate through the game because there was not actually a normal D-pad, only separate buttons. So I needed to get used to that and most of the time I'm just using the controller. So next up having the shifter, where I am not the biggest, let's say, racing fan of shifters itself. I must say when it comes to this, it feels quite premium, but I really needed to get used to it. Overall, when you're looking at the pedals, I was quite disappointed that we didn't have any, any metal. However, this thing was sliding away all the freaking time I'm playing. And this has a little bit to do with my underground, so I needed to do something with it, with extra meth or something of an styrofoam to keep it in place. But beside, I must say that I'm quite surprised with the overall forward feedback functionality and this thing looks quite nice and also overall performance is quite fun when playing some project cars. Thank you all for watching, let me know in the comments if you have any questions and it would be great to see you in the next video.